Oh my god. Folks. <sighs> Has it been this long? <laughs> Can you believe it? Right, Ben? Right. Ben Scrivens? <laughs> so long. My god, I think... Anyway, folks, we're here. It's it's Crep from the 80s. Uh, the, the episode that I have been teasing for you uh, uh, fans who keep bothering me about this episode. Yes, we will get to He-Man. Yes, we will get to He-Man. We're finally getting to He-Man with another He-Man aficionado. Yes. Uh, my pal and yours, Ben Scrivens. Um... Who has not been on the show. No. First time. Uh, well, you were on a show yes. when, when Crept first started like three years ago right. or something like that. Uh, it was a very dinky little camera. We set it up in the basement and we just kind of talked 80s. Uh, now we got a whole production going with with the Zatual I call There's Zatual. There's 15 people behind that camera. <laughs> you can't see them. It's an entire crew. Yeah, yeah. Um... And, uh, yeah, and we've grown to a whopping almost 600 subscribers, <laughs> but those 600 are very loyal fans, and we appreciate it, and, and you love to come to the channel and listen to us talk about our silly memories from the greatest decade of all. And today, finally, folks, we are going to talk about Masters of the Universe. We have the power. He man that's right. Today. <laughs> and, uh... The reason I wanted to bring Ben on board is because through the throughout the years I've known him, I've known you since 2004. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, throughout the years I've known you, every now and again, through our conversations, He-Man is brought up, and I remember things, I remember you talking about He-Man, and then when I went to Fright Rags, mm -hmm. he, he he's the owner <laughs> of Fright Rags, folks, <laughs> but so I went to the office, and then I saw more... I saw your He-Man stuff just kind of yeah. littered throughout. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, yeah, he, he does like He-Man. I remember him mentioning mm -hmm. He-Man. And I was like, well, who am I going to talk to in Rochester about He-Man? Ben, ben Scrivens. I will always talk about <laughs> He-Man. <laughs> um, and Chad, our buddy Chad, uh, horror, horror movie barbecue. Um, he's supposed to be here. Maybe he'll drop in. Maybe he won't. Um, but he also uh, has, a, uh, has a thickness for... For He Man and Masters of the Universe. Oh, he but, does. So, so we're gonna do it, folks. We're gonna break this down a little bit. I'm gonna ask Ben uh, some questions, and I will answer them as well. Um, <clears throat> but let's just get started. What What was your earliest memory? So I remember I was I think four years old. So we were born the same year, seventy seven. Yep. So this must have been eighty one. And I do remember. Uh, it's a little fuzzy. I think I remember um, getting... I might have gotten uh, Man at Arms for my birthday. Mm -hmm. And I think he was my very first character. And, I, and of course, this is before the show because yeah. the, the figures predated the show. That's right, folks. So I just remember being very fascinated by Man at Arms. And then I remember soon after going to Kitty City and they just had racks and racks. And I think at the time it was probably just a handful of characters, but it was mostly He-Man and Skeletor. Yeah. And my mom's like, you can get one. And I'm like, I want two. And she's like, you can get one. And I said, but I want He-Man and Skeletor. And she's like, but you can only get one, and we're leaving. And I'm like, okay, okay, okay. He-Man. So I grabbed He-Man. And then I just, that was, I just remember playing with those two figures. And then the show came out, and I was just, I was obsessed. That was my thing. And I, every Christmas for, I don't know, whatever the span of two, three, four years, yeah. it was a He-Man Christmas. I got as many characters as I could possibly get. I, that's all I asked for, is He-Man. You know, it's funny, and I've talked about it before on the show. <clears throat> I mean, obviously, time, money is different, but it's so funny mm -hmm. that back then, you know, our parents, our adult figures in our lives were like, Two dollars <laughs> for a figure? I know, exactly. <laughs> Seriously. Are like, you insane? <clears throat> Do you think I've made a money? Right. You know? You can get one. Like, oh, man, how do uh, I choose? And now toys, you know, are $9 oh. and up for, for one figure. And if you want to get the He-Man stuff, it's... Oh, forget it. Astronomical. Uh, you know, I, I call them nostalgia taxers. They, they, yeah. really, they really get you. Uh, yep. But, yeah, I mean, you know, two, three bucks for, for a He-Man figure back in the day. Yeah. Insane. Insane. That's why I want a time machine. You know what I mean? For real. Could you imagine going just back, go back and just, and just 
taking it all, leaving it in the box. Well, I don't want to give too much away right now. I kind of have a time machine sitting there. Oh, yeah? Okay. <laughs> I'm just I, I knew we there. would bring something to me. There's a, there is a time machine. But anyway, you're right. If I could go back in time and grab all that stuff, one for me, one to keep in the box, or whatever. <sighs> oh my God. It would be incredible. Oh my God. Um, yeah, so I I mean, it, I don't have a <clears throat> pinpoint memory at all mm -hmm. of it. Um, I just remember it being a thing. Yeah. Um, I was a... Die Hard, well, not was, am, a uh, Star Wars guy. So everything before He-Man, for me, toy-wise, was Star Wars. Star Wars, Star Wars, Star Wars. Empire Strikes Back was huge at the time. Those toys were rolling out, and that's that's what I had. I don't. So I don't remember when suddenly I had this bemuscled figure in right. my hand. You know what I mean? But I remember being like, these guys are huge, yeah. you know. They compared... felt good in the hand, right? Yeah. As a little kid, I don't know. There was something about and the huge. form factor. Was like, wow, <laughs> I can like really play with these. Uh, so I just remember being like, Star Wars, yeah. and then yeah. <laughs> was just like this. Wow, they are powerful, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I can feel it surging through my veins. <clears throat> and it just became a thing. And then suddenly there was this cartoon. And mm -hmm. He-Man was everywhere, and you were right in the fact that, like, every birthday, every Christmas, suddenly, this little boy was inundated with these muscle-bound, magical s spectacles. Uh, I would still get my Star Wars, you know, but He-Man was definitely, like... Oh man, I got this. I got this. I got. Well, they were introducing new up. characters every two oh, months. Well, you know, they loved those toy companies. That, yeah, that was you had to keep it relevant, man. <clears throat> you you know, you get done playing with He Man and Skeletor. Well, now what? You you need you need some more good guys. You need some more bad guys. And Let's they, take these parts and these parts, <laughs> repaint them, and then cover them with a stink. <laughs> it's stink or Hey, web store. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's add an OR at the end of everything. Oh, yeah. yeah, and Mattel and He's any of those, fist. Kenner, all of them, was, they did that, you know? Yeah. But it was it was great marketing. It, it, oh, we, it We are going to get it. Well, that yeah. was really in the very early, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe as the Reagan administration came in, there was a, um, he had sort of uh, basically allowed companies to market directly to children. There was something that prevented yeah, that yeah, yeah, in yeah. the 70s and prior to that. Yeah. But he sort of said, nah, He opened fuck the floodgates. Sorry, I didn't swear. No, it's oh, fine. Okay, <laughs> no, we didn't know. Yeah, uh, sure. You know, like, go ahead. I, 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 again, I don't know the specifics. I don't remember the specifics. But basically, that ushered in the 80s as we know it. And I think He-Man really was the beginning of all that. Well, I mean, again, <clears throat> the pop culture explosion. Uh, you know, you can, you can blame it on whoever. But I like to blame it on Ronald Reagan. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. The man in that way is a genius, and That's we wouldn't true. be loving the things that we love today if That's it weren't for probably those floodgates yeah. that he opened in, in the eighties. And the toy companies take, taking full advantage well, of our parents, yeah. the adults, uh, uh, knowing what was going to be a big hit, and and, and kind of uh, expanding. Well, it. even to sell it, it was like, oh, we got a comic book for it. Yeah, oh, uh, we got a series the, for the it. Series. You know? Yeah, it was all yeah. behind just the figures. The figures came first, which is so fascinating. That's why I love. That's one of the things I love about He Man is that there's inconsistencies, but they're so interesting. Like the comic books that came with the figures, and even the figures, the way they look, it's like, well, that that's not how they look in the show. And the show's yeah. so weird, based versus the comics. <laughs> Yeah, but I love that. For some reason, it's like a one dysfunctional family that's great. But I didn't, you know, I didn't care as much. <laughs> no, definitely I didn't as a at kid, all. you weren't really trying no, to connect I wasn't. the <laughs> the the continuity of. Wait a second, you know, that wasn't an issue. Although I I do remember probably as a five six year old being like, Man at Arms has got a a mustache yeah. on the cartoon, but he shaved for the for the, the toy. He's he's clean shaven. <laughs> he he cares about. His facial, you know... Anyway. Or even, like, the thing behind Castle Grayskull. Like, there was no sorceress in the beginning. Or, like, whoever had both swords and they had the key. And it was this whole, like, well, that mythology. Was the, and, yeah, the mythology was yeah. there in the in the comics and everything. And, but again, we didn't really just give went, a shit about that. Right. They threw that out the window with the cartoon. Oh. Like, it wasn't really about the power sword or anything like that. 
Um, King Randor and, uh, yeah. and Prince Adam, I don't think. Well, he was, I think it was in the comics. It I was think that insane. Stayed. Well, actually, I don't think it was. Maybe he wasn't? I think Prince Adam was a He certainly didn't look like he did in the cartoon, but yeah, you're right. I don't think he was in the comics. I think it was I just He-Man, He-Man. Did He-Man, you ever have the uh, albums? The storybook albums? Oh, yeah. 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 Those are great. Uh, actually, oh, one of the, my one God. the books is up there. Love that. Uh, I have that can't one. get that, but that's okay. It's great. Um, but... Yeah, well, that was prevalent as well, even in the Kenner stuff, the the Star Wars, they did that as well. That's right. Um, but, so yeah, I mean, as far as the earliest memories, it really, I, I think it would be connected to Christmases and, and birthdays, yeah. and then, because it, it, it was just there. It's <clears> funny, <throat> though, I can remember, I can remember my first Star Wars, really? you know, but I can't remember He-Man. I was totally into Star Wars, but my brothers were into it more they were older and I love the, the movies obviously Empire was the first one I ever saw in the theater of course we were three but yeah. I do recall it seeing was, like a light coming thing. from behind me you know same but uh, He-Man was the first thing that I think I latched onto completely as my own you know especially because my older brothers were into other stuff like that was mine and mine to have and yeah. totally just bought into everything that they put out I loved it I still have everything I still have all my figures really I don't think I've gotten rid of anything wow I was yeah. an idiot I definitely was an idiot. I'm sure I'm a few pieces short of Modula, but uh, I'm sure everything else. I'm <laughs> yeah, our Modula oh, yeah. is just <laughs> yeah. basic Modula, yeah. you know? Yep. Um, I had that box. I think I still have that box, actually. That's where I kept all the fi- all the pieces. Yeah, I mean, it's torn to shit, yeah, but... Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I don't know. I don't... It's so weird. I think it... it all I can say is it was just there. It was just there, and then it was mm-hmm. suddenly in my room and everywhere. Yep. Uh, so. I wanted it all. I wanted all the vehicles. You know what? I'll tell you what I didn't want. I didn't want all the iterations of He-Man or Skeletor. I couldn't buy into Battle Damage. I couldn't oh. buy into the Hurricane, because that wasn't He-Man or Skeletor to me. Battle Damage that wasn't canon. was as far as I would go. I did. I thought Battle Damage was kind of cool, but when he started getting into this like gold hurricane stuff, I was like, "That's not my He-Man." And the, the hashtag putting the uh, the the snaps, the caps, the the oh my gosh, gosh. in the yes. back of them. Yeah, yeah. And when you when you turn them, turn them, it snap. It yeah. snap. <clears throat> I like forgot the, all about the caps, that one, actually. the cap guns. <laughs> my mom uh, did not want to get stink or for me because she thought it would smell too bad. It did stink. But it smelled like patchouli. But it, but it really it was wasn't. Hippie. It wasn't store. That crazy. <laughs> That's what he yeah. should have done. <laughs> and I remember losing Moss Man in my mom's uh, plants because I would oh. put him in there strategically and I lost him <laughs> because he was so camouflaged because he was flocked yeah. with green. My whatever. Moss Man lost his flock. Yeah. He lost oh, his he moss. Did? Ew. Oh, yeah. It was gross. Oh, it's like it was a, gross. Like a dying And then it was just a, just a plastic man. Oh. Underneath, <laughs> oh, mine's still very well flocked, actually. Uh, I don't know. You're, you're a better man than me. <laughs> All right, so let's dip into who were our favorite <clears throat> characters in, in the He-Man line. Okay. Zodak. I had to write mine down. I didn't. Oh man, I gotta go. I just going off the top of my head. Zodak was one of them. Stratos was probably one of my favorites. Uh. Trying to think of who else comes to mind. I always liked Fisto. He was cool. <laughs> um, actually, I have a really funny, a quick story about one of them, who kind of sort of my favorite. And this is a true story, but I, I can't really take complete credit for everything, but I like to do it anyway because it's kind of fun. I was in the habit of writing Mattel and sending them new ideas for figures, and I would draw them. That's and cool. I had this idea for a figure. And that was probably, I don't know, what we were like eight probably, right? And it was a guy that you had a timer on him. And you would turn the timer, like an egg timer, to like 30 seconds or whatever. And when it went off, he would explode. But like his parts would yeah, yeah. come off. And so I got a letter back like months later saying, you know, thank you. It was very formal. Yeah. You know, we cannot take outside ideas. And okay, whatever. And like a year later, they introduced, I think it was Blast Off. And it was a guy with all sorts of little clocks on him, and then you had a little thing, and you'd press the button, and he would fall apart. Again, I can't take credit for that idea, but it was still pretty rad. And I was like, I need to get that guy. So it was kind of cool that it was a similar idea, but anyway, it would have been made anyway. But what are your favorites? Uh, I got, I mean, look at this. Okay, so um, 
First and foremost, Scarecrow. <clears throat> oh my god, I just thought of Scarecrow, sorry. First and foremost, um, I loved bad guys. Mm. The bad guys well, yeah, were I mean, the shit. Um, the designs, I felt, were way cooler. Um, mm. Horde And, act. well, that's what I want to say. <clears throat> the evil Horde were my guys. Yeah. Like... I loved them more than Skeletor and his crew, actually. Agreed. Um, Grizzlore. Yeah. Uh, so, Leech. so right off the bat, um, Hordak, Leech, Mantena, Mantena. Grizzlore. <laughs> I got them all. They are my favorites. Um, I love Stratos. Yeah. I love Merman. Yeah. Merman was just funny. I loved his voice in the cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Trap Jaw was a good one. I mean, I, it, Trap Jaw's on <laughs> here. Uh, Beast Man was Battle good. Armor He Man. Uh, Beast Man, Triclops, hmm. uh, Manny Faces, love Manny Faces, uh, Mecha Neck, I loved yeah. Ram Man, Evil Lin, Orko, uh, Extendor. Oh, the the chubby. He was kind of like a metally type. He dude was like he yeah, could, silvery, and he had like a the... thing. Like he had like a yeah, face yeah, plate, yeah. and then yeah, he could he could extend him. Yeah. He could pull his arms out and his <laughs> legs and make him tall and stuff. I always thought Faker was funny because it's like you're blue. It's just blue he man. Blue. He was a robot though in the in the in the right. lore. He was just a robot that Skeletor made. Um, but I agree. The Horde, even though they started with Shira, I yeah. feel like Hordak was a superior villain. He was man. to Skeletor, and he would end up being. Didn't wasn't he Skeletor's mentor or something? Well, didn't I they mean, work that in? Eventually, the it was. They were the <clears throat> they were rivals. Right. But yes, he was. He taught all the evil. You know, Hordak taught all evil. <laughs> um, and then it was like, they would fight. You yeah. know, who who was more evil? <laughs> but see, I, um, I always felt that Skeletor and his brood were like bumbling fools. Right. They were all That's played for laughs. Yeah. When the Horde... They only really played like Leech, uh, uh, yeah. not even Leech, uh, but Mantena more mm -hmm. for the laughs on that side of things. They were all evil, and then he had the Horde Troopers, which or I think the were coolest awesome. freaking army. I wanted like a hundred of them. Yeah, man. And I love that you could press the button; they would just kind of <laughs> flop. Like, how cool is that? They're so cool, <clears throat> and I felt like, what does Skeletor have? You know, Skeletor's yeah. have all, Skeletor has everybody that wants to usurp Skeletor. Right. Well, the yeah. Horde, they were a, a fully functional Horde. They followed Hordak. <laughs> yeah. They had, they were, I, he reminded me of, like, Darth Vader, man. He had yeah. his troop, you know, it was the Emperor. He had his group. That's Everybody right. would follow him. You were wrecking shop if you were in the Horde. And if you were at Skeletor's gang, you were just, whoa, like, whoa, something goofy would happen. And that's the problem. I think they made him so goofy in the cartoon, whereas the figure itself... It was actually pretty awesome. I mean, you hold Skeletor, you play with him, you could make him badass, but then you watch this cartoon, and he's like, hey, man. And you're like, <laughs> really? You bumbling boom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, so, those are my, look at, I mean, look at these guys. Look at these guys. Mantana, man. Remember King Hiss? Yeah, I uh, got him over there, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, you could, he's, you squirt water <clears throat> out of him. Oh, wait, no, King no, Hiss was the him. long, he was... Snake. No, that was, snake. You're talking man. about snake or Khan. Yeah. Khan. Yeah. 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 Khan. Yeah. Yeah. He, he shot Khan's like here. water out of his his right. mouth. You you pushed down. <laughs> no, King Hiss. You took his arms. Yeah. Off. Remember they, Snake War too, yeah, where yeah, his, yeah. Like, snakes would come out of his. I didn't eyes. and I didn't get as big into the snake line because mm -hmm. they started making those right. like a big deal. Uh, but I didn't. I think at that point it was like 87, 88. Yep. It was like, well, He Man is going down. And the rock guys, they that. fold over into rocks. Yeah. I had those guys. I was into it, I think, until probably 87, 88. Was... Yeah, after the motion picture, I was like, uh, all right, he so knows over. So, that's a good question. What was your thought on the motion picture? Now, when I was 10 years old, um, coming out of that theater, I was confused. I was Absolutely. very confused. I was just like... I didn't. <laughs> you know? I actually didn't really like it. Yeah, I was because like, I was like, "What? This ain't my He Man, right?" You know, I, I, I was I, like, "What am I watching? What do we just watch?" When I got into my twenties, 
I learned to appreciate the movie a lot more, and I actually really enjoy the movie now. I have it on Blu-ray. So do I. And probably every other year I, I watch it. Wow. I, I do. And See, I revisited a couple of years ago, and I was like, ah, even... Uh, but I but I, 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 I have fun with its, yeah, it's, it's, its not cheesiness. Right. Um, yeah. I think probably as a 10-year-old, um, I remember most being disappointed that there was no Orko. Right. So I really liked Orko, man. Orko's I thought Orko great. was cool. And I was like, who who the, who is this? And Gwildor is a character <clears throat> from those comics before the movie was even made. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah, they never oh, even, they so Gwildor was it. only like a comics lore oh. character. And the Marvel comics go. or the and the comics in the in the little in the, in the, the little comics. Yeah, so there was Gwildor. I don't think I knew that. I I did like uh what's his name? Blade. Yeah, he, well, he was cool. I got him. I'm He's like, cool. That's I cool. would actually... I I want those new... Um, the classics mm-hmm. line mm-hmm. of Blade, Gwildor, you know, <laughs> Sauron, oh, which is the lizard dude who was with, right. I totally with them. I him. Yeah, I, I, I... Well, I think part of the... Oh, Chris Laura, look at him. He's so fuzzy. <laughs> part of the problem with the He-Man movie also was that we had just gotten Transformers the movie. I think that came out prior to that, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, 86. And it's like... And then 87. So, like, I we got a cartoon version of a cartoon that we already love with with characters we already love. And now with He-Man, it's like, they went live action, they're using different people, the whole thing's different, they're on Earth. I'm like, what's what's happening? Like, yeah. we saw what could have been with Transformers. Hopes were too high. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it really, I think, honestly, after that movie, I was like, well, I'm done. You know, <clears throat> I think that was probably that like was it for my, my, my He-Man downturn there, too. My He-Man stuff was yeah. was was over with. Um, so what were your favorite vehicles and playsets? So definitely Castle Grayskull, which I still have, um, was probably one of my favorite playsets. Uh, although I did get Snake Mountain and I had the Fright Pit with the glove, right? Yep, Fright Zone. Fright Zone. Yep. Yeah. Um, but my favorite vehicle of all time was the I forgot what it was called, the Battle Ram one, where you could take the that's on my list. The Battle Ram is so dope. Well, <laughs> not only could you take the thing off and it was just like what they used in the show. Yeah. So now we're talking, I am in the show now. But <laughs> those rockets that shot out of there, the I, yeah, the, the little orange little things, yep. I used to make towers of my blocks and I'd put my guys in there. And my brother and I would just sit there and fire Launch these them. things and try to get the weak spots of the towers to make it crumble <laughs> down. I, I would still do that today for hours. Wow. Probably yeah. one of the best... Honestly, one of the best. And the one where you pull back and it shoots those discs. Do you remember that one? It was like a hawk. It was like a bird. And you had orange discs. And you pull... Oh, that was... Um, they actually made it... Well, it wasn't the same as a pizza spinner. That was a different thing. This, cause that was I, I do know what you're talking about. You pulled yeah, it yeah, back. Yeah, yeah. Those things shot 40, 50 <laughs> feet. You could, you could hurt somebody with those things. They were amazing. So, yeah. Battle Ram is on my list. It was yeah. it's number one. Uh, I love the Dragon Walker. Dragon Walker, it it was motorized. He Man sat in it. It did this. <laughs> it was so it, like inefficient. As yeah, a yeah. Vehicle. It was so slow. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. It just kind of did this and it moved. Did this, moved. It it was motorized. It was cool, but I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, Road Ripper. Yes, Road that's Ripper. absolutely one of my favorites. That uh, thing went fast too. Yeah, you you. You know, in the long tradition of pull toys, <laughs> you pulled it and let it go, and a little rubber. Wow, bottom. you know, that let it go. Um, I like um, the crusher, the bomb crusher. Yeah, it's, it had a giant like mace mm-hmm. type thing on it that, bam. Um, Rotan, Rotan was for the bad guys, and it it's <clears> like this. It's the head yeah. big ass eyes. Yeah. You sat him in the middle. It was black, and then on the side was this red rotor, like, like blade a saw, thing. Yeah, like a blade, yeah. And it spun around, <clears throat> and it was Rotom. <laughs> it was cool. And it was loud too. Actually, one of my favorite toys is sitting right over there on top of your Ghostbusters. Oh, which? Oh, uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot what the name yeah. of that is, but I loved that thing because it it it's like this three-wheeled cart that sled that he lays down on, but when you press yeah, a button, it pops up, up so yeah. he's, like, facing. He's almost standing up. I liked it, but it wasn't on my list. Um, and then I liked the Wind Raider. 
which oh, was I the never green. had that. I green. always wanted that. One. Yeah, it was their like uh, glider. It was their. Uh, I don't know. It was but that was of, in the show, too. Yeah, the sh- like that, that was in the show. I was enamored by things that were in the show. Like, I would get certain things, but I don't even think they used, like... There were certain things they never used in the show that you could get, right? Like, yeah. I don't even know if the dragon walker or the bomb thing was. No, 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 no. But I liked those, but if it was in the show, to me, it was like, this This was, like, in the world of He-Man. Like, it was, again, like, canon or something. Not that I knew that word as a kid. <laughs> the play sets, uh, Castle Grayskull... Loved Castle Grayskull and Fright Zone. Those were my two favorite. I mean, you could get, um, yeah, Snake Mountain, mm-hmm. and then oh, so the I Slime Pit. That. I never had the Slime um, Pit. This is my Slime Pit from when I was little. This is broke. Oh. Right. Uh, well, it's kind of broke. But That yeah. slime, you know, that slime really was the best. Yeah. It was... I can still remember the smell. And now you can get it for, like, $600. And it's probably dry. Yeah. Um, this is actually my leech as well, from my childhood. But Slime Pit was dope. Leech. You know, you, 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 you drop the slime back here, open it up, and it covered your <laughs> characters in goo. And then you had to then take the slime off, collect yeah. it, put yeah. it back in the Paris little trash it. can tub. Yeah, yeah. I had some slime, but I don't think I never had the slime pit. That's um, too bad. Now kids make it in the basement. These are my Skeletor and He-Man mm. from when I was a kid. These are my exact figures. I have. Look at look at both of my. Oh, he's how fucked oh, up he is. Ooh, wow. <laughs> my Skeletor's head's flopping off. Oh, so it's pretty sad. Yeah, I mean the legs are terrible. I mean these guys can't stand. <clears throat> right. You know. Uh, I just pop them. I mean, they are 35 years old. (laughs) More. Almost 40 now. This is 82. This one's 82. God. But yeah, these are, they've seen better days, but, um. Yeah, shaved his eyebrows. I I recently, uh, went down to Wellsville, where I grew up, and went into my room and kind of ransacked as much as I could from my old room. Nice. Um, and these are some of the ones remaining. that's a good find. This is my... This is my oh, your bad battle damage He Man. He's forget about it. A little wobbly. This, this guy can't stand, but you know, yeah. His his damage that his chest still works. works. Oh, yeah. oh, boom. <laughs> wow. It's so effective. Yeah. <laughs> it's um, actually pretty brilliant what they were able to do with those same molds and stuff. Yeah. Like, that was just a different chest and pop the same heads and legs on and That's it, man. Um those are mine from, from back then. <clears throat> This is my Fisto. Oh, oh it's... Um, st- uh, I think it's Strider. 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 Yeah. yeah. And this is my Strider. It's missing bits. I always love that cartoon, the episode with Strider. It was like... And then they had a bad version. Mm-hmm. He was purple and black. Um, you still have your Panthor? or? Battle I don't Cat? have Battle Cat or Panthor. Really? No. No, I want to recollect my But you had pack. them, but you just don't have I them. I did have them. Oh, gotcha. yeah, I had them. Come on. Are you kidding me? Now it's like pulling teeth to get them. It's like $80 just to get one one of those. That's insane. You nostalgia taxers. You're so evil to me. Uh, but, yeah, you know, I got some other stuff. These are like, these are the more, these are actually my, my kids. Because uh, uh, my son River really digs. Oh, wow, those Funko Orca? Orco? Yeah. I never knew they did the Norco version. So these are the Funko Pops. I'm not a big... I don't really do the Funko thing. It's really got to be something crazy for me to do That's it. pretty awesome. Um, but my son loves them, and he loves He-Man. He oh, wanted yeah. me to get That's them. Right. I haven't seen the Beast Man one. Um, so I thought that was pretty cool. He, he's he's getting into... Well, he, he, won't, he won't say that to any of his cool kid <laughs> friends these days, but... He has his own gray skull in his room and figures and everything. Um, oh, these man. This is still a pretty good. Not bad, yeah. yeah it's still it's tight. Tight legs and tight arms. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that's my God. <laughs> you're gonna get, you're gonna get slapped by Beast Man. Beast Man. The five fingers say to the face. <laughs> that's right. Oh, and so this was the Prince wow, Adam. he's in great condition. Mine's all messed up. 
Mine's busted up. Prince Adam, and he does have his sword. He, um, it is some. It's uh, I actually I might be. Want another Prince Adam? I think I need to go and find one. This, um, <clears throat> this I believe was this cost me like thirty dollars. Wow. Um, but it was worth it to me because of the the shape sure. he's in. Absolutely. Um, yeah, mine's all busted up. He still stands. He's got his nice flocked <laughs> little velvet flock. <laughs> yeah. Purple pants. Yeah, there it is. Same guy. Did you ever have the the Wonder Bread? No. He Man. No. Oh, that's with, with the brown, brown hair. hair. No, no, and, and no. Are you kidding me? Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, you, that you, thing's you, going for what now? Like, oh my God. Forget. I wouldn't even. Thousands of dollars. Yeah. You, you had to send away <clears throat> to get a another weird version of He Man. Um, but yeah, there you go. I almost went as him for Halloween. Oh. But I did go as He Man. You can check out a picture here. I'm sure Zatchel will put it up. But I was He-Man this Halloween. It looks pretty cool. I saw the picture. Um. Okay. So. Um, ooh. Okay. So overall, for you, what does the franchise mean to you? Like, why is it something that still, as a 42-year-old man? that you're still attached to He-Man what? Like, wh why why He-Man? You know what's interesting? That's a good question. Because when I think back to He-Man, like, when I think back to the things that I was into as a kid, He-Man, G.I. Joe, like, G.I. Joe I was into because I think in the 80s a lot of kids were into military stuff. We liked guns, we liked, like, Commando and Rambo, and so G.I. Joe spoke to that in me, and I can totally understand why my love for that was, was so much. But with He-Man... I was never really into, like, that barbarian type thing, and I was never really into, like, fantasy. Like, science fiction, yes, but fantasy, like, big animals and, like, Conan stuff. I, that just never spoke to me, but for whatever reason, He-Man did. And even rewatching the cartoons when my daughter was younger, I was like, this is just fun. And I think what it represents for me, honestly, it's one of the purest forms for me of childhood. And it might even be early childhood. Like, that four to, like six to eight probably that sweet spot obviously i was probably into a 10 11 whatever mm -hmm. but like like four to like seven or eight i think it's there's a pure innocence to it for me i think after that with the guns and gi joes and stuff like that you got for lack of a better term maybe a little bit more real or something but for he-man it's to and it was also creative like yeah. Buzz Off and Roboto and all these like so crazy things, like so many crazy ideas in this one world. It's just, it's fun and pure like childhood imagination. Yeah. What about you? Uh, I mean, very similar, but also I loved fantasy. <laughs> oh, so there you <laughs> I was go. a yeah, huge, I yeah. uh, loved anything <clears throat> that was coming out fantasy, I was a mark for. Because um, I also, yeah, I love Jim Henson. I love like, Anything with creatures and puppets and, mm -hmm. and things like that and and dragons and um, I also was a like you a Marvel kid. Mm -hmm. um, so one of my favorite characters growing up was Thor, and He Man was Thor. Yeah, it was Very mixing similar. fantasy and science fiction and technology. And He Man was basically ripping it off oh, in a yeah. way. I mean, it really was. Really? I mean, if you look at some of the backgrounds in the cartoon, it looks like Jack Kirby drew them straight out of a Thor comic mm -hmm. book. Thor mixed the fantasy and the science fiction and the tech. Uh, so I, that appealed to me in a big way. Um, but also the imagination, the characters, like you said, the amount of characters, the amount of. Yeah creativity that was thrown into all of these things it was it was like it was a buffet basically like you it's a good word for it you know you what were they going to come up with the next month yeah. uh, the next series, I think that was part of the appeal for sure the next series of toys were just like holy crap do you see what they're doing now it's a ninja <laughs> you know? he folds yeah. into a rock <laughs> yeah. you know his eyes bug out of his head literally yeah it's just yeah. nuts you know it was so cool and they must have had a blast oh my god you, know? you imagine those being those toy makers like just... 
I mean, just uh, design and laughing. I want to know about the ones that didn't make the cut. <laughs> like, I want, I want those yeah. toys to be made. Yeah. Have you watched the the toys that made yeah, made us yeah. episode? Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Did you watch the doc? Yeah, yeah. The, oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Grace Skull. I will eat all of that up when it yeah, comes out. It's I, great. And I and it's it's funny because my joy for it hasn't waned in a way. Like when I watch those, I get goosebumps. Like, oh yeah, I'm I like, about it. Yeah. I just, I, I don't, I don't even know if I can put like words to it. It's just like a feeling that wells up, and I'm there, and yeah. it really does capture it for me. All those specials like that, it really does like, cre- like just bring you back to that moment where I'm like, oh my god. It was, I when I think of any of these toy properties or or franchises or the pop culture from the '80s, um, we there wasn't. I'm being honest here, and this is just my opinion, but. There wasn't anything like it. It's true. What was happening in the 80s, there's nothing like it. No. It wasn't like that in the 90s. The kids didn't have what we had. They just didn't. It wasn't a convergence of imagination, creative, this explosion. Mm -hmm. And it was happening to us at that time. It was, we were being inundated with... Thundercats, Silverhawks. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, it was... in he man G.I. Joe, and it was constant. insane. And they were all their own thing. <laughs> Mask was its own thing. He man right. was its own thing. But it was so cool because I think now everything's so splintered. Like even with like Batman, you can get like hundred different types of Batmans back in the late nineties, or even now, you know, yeah. or just yeah. now everything's so like you can get the small ones, the big ones, the middle ones, the big ones. Blah, blah, blah. It's like I can't wrap my head around it. But with He Man, I felt like once you got into it, you knew it. It's like all right, I want all these characters, these vehicles, these play sets. Boom. And, you know, same with G.I. Joe and all those. It's like... It was a, oh, man. We were so lucky. <laughs> I agree. It was... Yeah, it was the best. Um, going up. So. All right. Being a He-Man fan, what are your... Um, <clears throat> your... What do you think of the future of mm. the franchise? Because it is coming back. Yeah. Uh, like everything... We loved in the mm-hmm. 80s. <laughs> it is coming back. Uh, and they are... Now, we've had She-Ra. That mm-hmm. kind of made a resurgence. And I guess if you are in the collector's market, if you are a fan of uh, collecting, long. He-Man has sort of been there. Uh, with the classics line, with Mattel, Maddie, the Maddie collector thing. And Super 7. Super 7, which... I have my issues with Super mm-hmm. 7. Um, I do have the... <laughs> These guys here. Um, now these are the Super Seven Filmation mm-hmm. uh, classics with the classic molds, but the Filmation looks, as opposed to just redoing the the classic figures. Um, I like them. I'm not a fan of how you need to get them, mm-hmm. but I like them. Um, See, my head hurts with when I think of the collector's market because there's so many iterations of things and it's almost like I don't know what I want like those are great I love those yeah. but I can't it's like but there's so many it's like the turtles there's so many different variations and mix-ups and mash-ups of these things that it almost turns me off from it well I think you gotta go for what <clears throat> you Gets it yeah, turns your gears the, the, a little bit. The appeal, yeah. it's, it's got to like these appeal gotta, to me, yeah, yeah, because they look like those. I bought the big ones, you know, are those ones on top, those are the original. No, 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 these are the commemoratives. Oh, see, these I would have gotten those, yeah. In 2000, they just re released the originals. Damn, those are probably worth something, though, now, easily. Um, it's amazing because it's got the little Mattel logo and everything. Yeah, I mean, it's essentially what we had. This is... Yeah. Ah, uh, you know. New, yeah. But they just rolled out the... <laughs> and for somebody who doesn't want to spend, you know, $400 on one figure, uh, these were great uh, because these came out and they were like $15 at the time, you know? Uh, so, same with Merman. Now this, that Grizzlor is is old school. That's nice. 1985 Grizzlor in his in his packaging. You uh, bought that on eBay. Twenty five bucks. Twenty five bucks in a vintage shop. Wow. 
I was uh, commending the store owner because almost everything I got at that shop <clears throat> was really great prices. They yeah. weren't like nostalgia taxing like so many people do. I was like very like I got um, the Centurions. Oh yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. Two of them for twenty bucks. Like they were just so. And if you want to get a Centurion uh, complete on eBay, they go for seventy dollars to one hundred and twenty dollars. Fuck that. No way. Yeah, no. <laughs> you know that's insane. So I know we're talking about the future, but because we're talking about these, I want to show you what I brought. Oh, okay. If you don't mind. Yeah. Go ahead. Is that cool? Yeah. <laughs> but first, I am. I, this I know oh, yeah. this is cr crazy lame, but go ahead and put these on. Oh well, yeah. yeah you got it. Yeah. I get it. I understand. Yeah. But you know, you'll you'll under, definitely understand when I bring out what I've got. You want the oils? You don't no, want the, because the... so I don't know uh, this little bit of a backstory on what I'm about to show. Do you follow someone named Zombie Toy Collector? Uh, Zombie Sailor? I don't. On Instagram? I don't. Okay, I don't. he is the time traveling toy collector. Okay. He has this. He buys and sells toys, and he has this knack of finding the craziest crap you'd ever even imagine. And a few months ago, about six, seven months ago, he um, ha he basically was starting to tease something about Master of the Universe. He's going to change the game. Okay. Essentially what happened, and I don't know the, the full, full, full story, but there was a warehouse that was essentially like packages would you know, you know come from China and come to this warehouse and they would ship out to like Just TV right now, I hate these stories. And Kitty City and whatever, you know? But... <laughs> Because this place had, I guess, several, I don't know if it was pallets, containers, lots of stuff that was sitting there for the last 35 years. Mm. Never had been out of the case, never had even seen a, a peg rack, ne nothing. It was still sealed from when it came over from the manufacturer. And he spent, I believe, like three years saving up to buy all of this from this guy so that he could then turn around and sell it to collectors. So he started teasing what he had. I was foaming at the mouth. <laughs> and he DM'd me because he was wearing one of our shirts. He's one of our customers. He's yeah. like, hey, I'll show you what I got. And if you want to do some, you know, I was going to pay for them, obviously. But it was yeah, like, yeah. if you want like a private thing, I'll show you like what you got, what I got. I'm like, awesome. So out of what he had, this is what I got. I got two things. One, now again, this is... All original. It's bent because it was in the case that way. Because yeah. you know when they packed them in. But I think you'll appreciate this. Oh, this is on my list. <laughs> Guys, that is not a reissue. That is that is from 1985, I think. 84? 84. 84. That is original. That is Ugh. never even... Look at that. Unpunched. The, unpunched. The, the classic is still... Completely, it's not yellow. The it's never seen air. So, it was never, it never saw essentially this is oxygen. Like such a clean, clean bubble, yeah. clean card. And I do, I do need to get these graded, but um, yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Hordak has been on my wish it's... list for years in a in a package Hordak. Because eventually, I want to get all the Horde mm -hmm. in in their packages. Mm -hmm. From back well, then. he had all the horde. He had Grizzlor. He had, I think, he had Leech. Oh, man. He had everyone. But I wanted Hordak. Man, yeah, this is beautiful. Isn't that great. In the artwork, like even just looking on the back and seeing, it's so like, clean, it's perfect. It's clean, folks. And then, so again, I had to be, I had to yeah, be kind would, of choosy. I would put that in like acrylic. Yeah, I am. I'm going to get it graded, and I'm going to be putting it in a case, UV, acrylic, the whole nine, because this is an investment, because it was not cheap, but it was I, worth it. I can't imagine. Um, all right. And then, because this harkens back to, I mean, obviously that harkens back to my childhood, but this, I was like, I just need to, I need to own this, because, again, to get one of these like this, you're talking, oh my god. Oh my God. <laughs> Battle cat <laughs> in the box. Oh. Perfect. Look at the artwork. Oh. Everything about oh. it is. Oh, this is like <clears throat> off the shelf. It is literally you know? off the shelf. This is time traveling. This is going back in time, taking it off the shelf and coming back. So you'll notice. Yeah, you'll notice. Oh yeah, there he is, Dragon Walker. Yep. 
you'll notice that this is the actually the second issue of Battle Cat. The first one didn't have all these vehicles. Yeah, yeah. Remember he because he came out he came with out. the original. Yeah. But this is from 1984-85. So this is probably the second run of them. But still original Battle Cat. Still everything's original. <laughs> never out of and never out of the case. Let alone out of the box this or is anything. Killing else. me. It was never even a store. Look at that art. It really, you know, it's interesting to see the art up close and to see how clean and fresh it is. Like, I know, I, I know it's a weird thing, but like, it really stood out to me. It's almost like, um, <laughs> like it's viewing beautiful. it in like high resolution or something. It is. Right? This is this is like <clears throat> this is like childhood. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's like, what I mean. It like on it, the shelf, it, yeah, like, it's not yellowed. It's not sort of bent or whatever. It's like no, that's like how you would have seen it as a eight year old or a seven year old. This guy. Yeah. He so. must have, uh, I mean, lost his shit. You know what I mean? To to come into something like that. Well, you know what's funny? I um, <laughs> when he posted a picture of himself in front of this container and all these boxes behind him, and I never asked him this question, but behind him I saw Eternia in the box, and I'm like, and I never saw that for sale on his thing, and I'm like, could you imagine? I think the instructions go for a hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah. just, just the instructions. Oh yeah. Yeah. I have a yeah. lot of uh, toy friends who, yeah. who have spent <clears throat> lots of money getting that to put it together. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Just just pieces. Yeah. And this was in the box, never had seen the light of day. Oh, but again, I don't even know. Like I just saw that in a picture, so I don't even know if he has it, sold it, whatever. But these were among the ones. He had other other ones that were great, but I'm like, at some point, I gotta, I just have to pick the... I gotta, I gotta be pretty choosy, but yeah, I'm gonna be giving these in cases and graded because they deserve to be great. displayed. But I can't just display them the way they are because I think I was, I think I was shaking a little bit. <laughs> well, I knew if anybody would appreciate seeing these, you would appreciate those it, are so. gorgeous. Thank you. Gorgeous. Yeah, they're definitely investment pieces. They're they're ones that I will never part with unless I absolutely had to. But yeah, oh my God. But, but as far as the future of the franchise, yeah, <laughs> I don't know, man. Like their new movie, I saw some sketch art and stuff for the new movie. Um, yeah, how did now? Now, okay, so you saw the? Did you see the guy that they got? I saw the, the guy, and I saw some early at the licensing show this year. They actually showed some of the, uh, like, uh, uh, the early stage art for it. Okay, and they were actually like they had something based on Rotan. And they had, like, they were actually had, I think, the Wind Raider. Hmm. And they were showing these early preliminary sketches. Now, again, I don't know if any of that's going to end up being used. I know the movie got pushed back a year. Yeah, it's 2021 um, now. Yeah. So it's possible that all this stuff goes out the window. But I'll tell you, they had um, uh, a little interview with the writers and directors. And they said, listen, we're fans of this. We want to show, we want to use as much as from, you know, from the 80s and, and the cartoon as possible. So I, I, at least they're starting in the right yeah, uh, the right way with the right foot. They forward. have their they have their hearts. Yeah, where, firmly where they need to be. I here's the thing. I worry about it because for me and us as adults, you'll never get what we had. No, no, no. It's never gonna happen. So it's got to be for the next generation. Of course. But then I wonder, do kids even care? Well, I think that's why they're doing this re re push. Right. The, the Netflix cartoon mm -hmm. that's coming. <clears throat> the Thank You Mattel. Mattel coming out with the new figures mm. that are going to retail. They're not special. Good. They're not they are going to stores. That's been my big thing with the Super Seven and Maddie Collector, is that they're just they're online or collectors only. They're not Target. They're not Walmart. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Mattel is bringing them back out. And they're bringing them back out with... Have you seen them? No, the I, looks I don't think I've them? seen what they've... I okay, know Mattel have, got it back from Super 7. They have the like, first line okay. that, that are coming. 2020. Brand... Original artwork, everything. But they've changed the figures so that they're more articulate for kids today. Oh, I so think I might have seen... They have more parts... Yeah. Yep. They the have same all form the factor, right? articulation and everything... Um, the, the designs are changed just a little bit, but it's still essentially those figures in that packaging. Um, and they're, again, they're putting them out. They're sort of doing a rebranding for kids today to see if there is that audience. I wonder. I, it's, I think it's a weird 
franchise. It is. Because Listen, it we're is. so stuck in this nostalgia factor, which is great. For, great for collectors, great for people like us now that we're older and have disposable income to throw away on this crap. But then you've got kids who, it's a different thing for kids now. It's video games. It's a whole, I mean, how can He-Man compete with Fortnite and all these other things? I, I know, um, but I think, I want to say they're going after 5, 6, 7. Mm. You know? Which they should. That's um, who they targeted with us. Because look at what they did with She-Ra, all right? The She-Ra show yeah. uh, became huge. It's got four seasons. The toys came out from Mattel. And little girls are freaking loving this. Show. So that's work, you know. It that has worked. And the Shira show was for kids, not for. It's, it's got. I mean, it's it obviously has some it's going to be. I mean, it's got the right. the, you know, yeah. the spillover, of course. Um, but I've seen kids. Okay, I've seen kids dressed up as Shira. I've seen kids in Target holding dolls. You know okay. what I mean? So yeah. no, that's it's great. working. Um, and I think they're hoping that. The, the relaunch of the Masters of the Universe is going to appeal to those kids, you know. And that's how, where they should be pointing their efforts, you yes. know. I mean, now you're going to get people like us who are going to eat this shit up, and hopefully, the it does appeal to us uh, as adults. But primarily, listen, folks, it's for a new generation. I think that's where a lot of these, um. Listen, everybody loves the things they love as adults. Their 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 fandom can go extreme. It can be tempered. There's people like us, and then there's people who take it a little further, okay? But I think us adults lose sight uh, at what these things are, mm-hmm. essentially are. We try to carry it with us. Into adulthood when, but really... there's but there's some people out there who feel like you know no, these these are mine. That's what I mean. You like they're no, you can't play with my toys. And it's like you know, it's like dude. Yeah, but, you know. <laughs> these were made for kids. Right. These things that we love as forty exactly. somethings, we were kids. Yeah. We just happen to still love yeah. that thing, but essentially they weren't made. These things now they're not made for us. Right. You know, so when I when I see people get upset with Transformers or Shira or Turtles or whatever, it's like, it's dude, not for you. It ain't for you. No, nope. you can either watch it, wow, it mm-hmm. appeals to you, or you can say, you know what, that's for that ten year old who's growing up now, and and I, and I think people, I mean, people lose that, people forget about that, and they have their ownership, their 42, 43, 44-year-old mm-hmm. ownership for something that was never for adults in the first place. Yeah. Um, so, I don't know. I think I think let let everybody have it. Right. You know? If, and it can be for everybody. We can, can have be. the collector's versions. We can exactly. have the things that we love. And you can also have the five-year-olds getting into whatever they're putting And these that. companies know that. Yeah. You know, that's why, for them. That's why there are so many <clears throat> offshoots uh, well, these collectors are thirty-five dollars, right. and that's because the forty-year-old right. is going to be buying. <laughs> exactly, because we're spending the thirty-five bucks. On um, Star Wars. I mean, it's the same thing. All all the nostalgic stuff that we loved growing up. It's it's going to get recycled, and there's going to be stuff for adults, and there's mm-hmm. going to be stuff for kids. I, I feel like just let it let it be. Don't get upset. You have what you have. And no one's taking that have. away. Yeah, there's nobody taking. No one's ruining it. Like a lot of uh, you people say, <laughs> this ruined this. I don't understand how anyone's childhood can be ruined when it already happened. <laughs> like, how can it happen? You, go... you still love what you loved. No one took that movie or that figure away from you. Yeah. yeah. Don't spoil it. Don't spoil it for the kids. Just have fun. And like kids could be into what they're into. You know? If you happen to like it, Even great. better. All the more, yeah. yeah. It's great. Super. You got something new from that franchise to get into uh, so I don't know but if you don't like New Adventures of He-Man <laughs> <laughs> well I hated it <laughs> so did I I get that you know? but you know again but we were aging out it. of it a little bit yeah. someone liked it and whatever those cool. those five year olds at 1989 you know who, who saw it were probably like well I remember the New they Adventures they might be nostalgic He-Man. for it and they might exactly. be buying these things off eBay but and it's not for me no it's not my hashtag not my He-Man <laughs> But I'm not going to tell you right. to hell with you. 
Drop it. Be into your He Man. You love what you love. He Man and the bombs and the protein and the dragon. Spectacular. Yeah, so. That was great, huh? He Man. Absolutely. Love He Man. <laughs> he Man. I'll never not love He Man. That's right. Ooh, that, 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 uh, that wrapping paper. Yes. That oh. is vintage. Yeah. That is vintage He Man wrapping paper. That is beautiful. That my wife got to wrap when I turned 40. She wrapped all of my birthday presents in vintage He Man wrapping paper. And then was like, do you know how much I spent on this wrapping paper alone? <laughs> that's your present. There's she nothing inside. Lot. It was just empty. And boxes. that's all that's left. And, uh, Oof, you better save that. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Do you have all the books and the things of the comics and all that? They made big bound versions of all the um, comics, the newspaper strip. I have a... It was. It's the He-Man characters book. It's from that line. Mm-hmm. It's the giant. It's thick. It yeah. costs $55 yep. or whatever. Um so I have the all the characters okay. from She-Ra and He-Man. I okay. have that book. I want, I don't know why they haven't, but I want a, uh, a toy guide. I want a toy book yes. Yes. that just has all the characters, yes. all the vehicles, all there the There is a company sets. that makes them for G.I. Joe and Transformers, which I have, and I think they do it for He-Man as well. Yeah, I have, like I have Mark Belomo, that Maybe guy. That's, that's the one I'm thinking of. And he, had, he did the, that might be the one Star Wars one, yep. which I have. He did this, the tubular. Age oh yeah! Oh, that's why I know the name. Um, yeah, but he also did the Transformers okay. guide. He did the GI Joe guide, mm-hmm. um, and he just he's doing like a fourth version, fourth edition of the GI Joe one. Oh wow! Um, but yeah, but I want a, you know, big yeah. ass, <laughs> thick book compendium of of all the toys. Yes, that would be amazing to have. Agreed. Uh, the, de- the designers, everybody, it would, it would be great. Um, I do have two original cells from the show. That's uh, that was something that stuck with me from your office when I walked in there. I was my my, my eyes bugged out a little bit because I did see that, um, and I want that. I yeah. I want cells in, yeah. in in general. I want real Ghostbusters. I would love to have an animation cell. Um, I want the an animation cell for Mask. Mm-hmm. Um, Elf, the cartoon, I want an animation <laughs> cell. Things like that. Punky Brewster. Yeah, yeah I have those stuff. two, and I have Garfield's Halloween Adventure, which is pretty yeah. awesome. Which was signed, right? By Jim Davis. Yeah, I did. I saw that, too. Yeah. Man. Yeah. It's pretty awesome. <laughs> but those those are things I like, because it's, like it's a literal piece. Yeah. It's like an that's, artifact. That's history, man. Yeah. Actually, the where I got the He-Man cell is a friend of mine. He has, like a ton of old cells that I guess were in, I don't know if they were in a warehouse or he knew a friend, he just had a stack of them. I think he's got some real Ghostbusters ones too. Well, they're just like, he's just yeah. got a stack of them. I, I want them. And, and luckily they're not that bad. You know, no. you know, they can no. go from 50 to, yeah, they're not, to they're one. not like they're outrageous. Not, not too bad. You, know? um, you mentioned the, the dude who found a warehouse full of toys. Um, there's a guy in Florida, um, a friend of mine who's also like a nostalgia collector who's trying to get back his childhood, um, he knew this dude who found a, it was like a Kmart or like an old store, one of those department stores that still had um, boxes full of real Ghostbusters. just And they were clearing the, the Kmart out. Hmm. And the guy just bought... You know, he just bought the lot, you know? Yeah, yeah. And they, the guys who were cleaning out didn't know what it was. They were just like, you want this crap? So he didn't pay a lot. But so when he opened it up, it was just boxes full of old school Kenner real Ghostbusters toys. <laughs> Pristine. And then was selling them off for... But this guy was kind of a jerk. I mean, he was selling them for, for, for... Yeah. I mean, <clears> that's the stuff, stuff that's, that's yeah. just like, give me a break, dude. You know? Which is sad. It's sad. sad. You know, there's a car- you can get carded real Ghostbusters figures for four hundred dollars. I I can't, I can't do it. As much as I love it, as lo- as much yeah. as I would love to have it back in my life, I, I can't. That's yeah. Four hundred dollars. There's, there's a line you got to draw at some point. That's rough. That's what I mean. Even with these, I was like, I would never in my life do this. But this is like once in a lifetime. <laughs> I mean that, but you know, I think this was like, when's that ever gonna happen? That's and, that's uh, that's something. Yeah, and in that condition, 
Right. You know, because you can get stuff carved. Oh yeah, you can get yeah. But not, I mean, not, believe I mean, me, folks, I just held it in my hand. <laughs> that, that stuff was fresh. <laughs> Oof. My God. Yeah. He is, he is a lucky man. A very... and Lucky man child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they will be on display eventually. You know, I get... Protected. I, I mean, when I think of the... Because I've got Star Wars figures still in package downstairs... And they they don't look anywhere, but just those boxes are like, oh my god, mm-hmm. oh my god. But to see, this stuff is golden, folks. Yeah, he he, he, know, he knows what he's got. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, for getting rid of it. <laughs> well, that was great. That was great. Yeah. My God, going down memory lane, Masters of the Universe. Always happy to talk. One of the greatest. Masters franchises of all time one of the greatest kid things properties of all time huge and i hope it i hope i hope it does well coming back out 2020 seems to be the big year of masters in the universe they're they're really going crazy with marketing licensing all that stuff it's it's being pushed back out there kids and and i'm gonna i'm gonna be there (laughs) hopefully i'll enjoy it but if not you guys have a lot to look forward to you kids. I know there's kid that, kids that do watch this. So I know you kids. And you're going to have more articulation, so you can be That's able to right. do more with your figures you can than do we crazy Africa. stuff. Yeah, we only got this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that robot. That's about it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so. Thank you, Mattel. Thank you, everybody involved in Masters of the Universe. Mattel. And uh, we will see you again on another exciting explosive and erotic episode mm. of it crept from the 80s now i just want to go play with toys Let's so thanks it. a lot ben thanks a lot <laughs> let's open these suckers up oh, f- <laughs> <laughs> no <Okay. laughs> all right bye